Coming up next, Amsoil Championship Snowcross and the ERX National. The world's greatest snowcross racers take on the massive track at ERX Motor Park in Elk River, Minnesota. Pro class points leader Elias Ischel continues to impress, but in his wake are four racers battling hard, ready to bust a move. The snow bike rivalry is on. Cowboy Kirchmeyer, Troy Horbati, and the butcher Yannick Boucher will turn up the track today. In pro light, Jordan LaBelle is on a rail, but that kind of racing also comes with a big target on his skidoo sled. Can the young racer from Canada handle the pressure? The championship chase is heating up and Amsoil Championship Snowcross starts right now. About 45 minutes from Minneapolis is Elk River, Minnesota. This is where round 11 will be contested of Amsoil Championship Snowcross. Welcome everyone to the ERX Snowcross National here on the CBS Sports Network. Hello again everyone, Paul Small, Haley Shanley alongside. We go from the tight confines of Deadwood for rounds nine and 10 to something completely different for round number 11. And what a proper national snow cross course this is. Mega, vastly different like you said. So keeping these riders on their toes, this may only be our fourth visit in series history, but make no mistake, ERX has played a pivotal role in the sport of snow cross racing and now could make a pivotal role in any of these riders championship hopes. Now let's hear more from the third member of our broadcast team, Josie Christian. You're definitely proving more consistency these last few races than you, we saw you earlier this season. What do you think the difference maker for the end of the season is for you? No, I'm just going to try to do the same every week. And I've just had a, uh, a lot happening earlier in the season, just bad luck and a couple mistakes. And yeah, I'm just trying to stay up there in the qualifiers, uh, get a decent pick for the final and uh, yeah, uh, may, uh, make a good final. Time for a pro qualifier in the field for this one. Emil Har looking to build some momentum after a win in round nine. And he's up against some tough talent with the number eight Hunter Pat note for the Shearing Speed Sports Skidoo, who continues to be our top qualifier in this division. And Pat note gets a good launch, but Yurik on the inside gets up alongside him and Har, and then Pauline drops down to the inside, and he's got some clear racetrack to go chasing after Pat note as they'll come up and around the Dennis Kirk corner. Battle on for the second spot behind Patno. Pauline has it. Yurik Har and it looks like Travis Kern chasing after him. I'm sorry, that's Cole Katu chasing after him as Patno hits the big triple here out front. Seeing the riders all bunched up towards the back of the pack here, but even for the second place position right now is between the 727 of Jacob Yurik and Kyle Pauline. And it looks like maybe Yurt got the measure. He'll come off that outside as they run down through the Air Force rhythm section, chasing after your race leader, Pat Node. Yurt on the inside, and he'll carve down off that big skidoo corner. And he and Pauline are going to go bar to bar into the rhythm section contact, and they're both off their sleds. Oh, tough break. Contact made. Imohar is shaped. Quite a bit of time off of Hunter Patnode's lead as he chases Whoa! down. Off track excursion for Patnode, and here comes, and there goes Zemo Har, trucking right by into the race lead. Now let's see if Patnode can get him back. Lap three of five, now it's time for defense. We'll see if Emil Har can hold off the number eight. Oh, Patnode changing lanes into the Dennis Kirk corner, ripping the inside. Har triples out, they'll hit the Arctic Cat triple. Flying bar to bar into the Polaris turn, Patnode Bangs into the side of Emil Har as they clear that rhythm back over the big air triple here in front. Good battle here for the race lead. Very smart line choice by Hunter Patno. Tries to force a 31 out wide. It just wasn't enough. It appeared that the 31, Emil Har had just a little bit more speed heading back onto the front stretch. They're making their way through the U.S. Air Force big air section of the course. Now they'll come back up into this skidoo corner. Patno carves the inside, gasses it up. 
Little contact as they triple their way across. Bar to bar, back through this rhythm section. Patno aiming for the inside. Har will gas it on the outside, triple his way in to try to keep pace. Patno leads it by half a ski as they come into the Polaris corner, and Har carves around the outside and takes the race lead back. Lap four of five, neither of these gentlemen giving up any ground, continuing to force the issue. Contact's made, tries to force him wide on that inside line, not going to be enough. Pat No trying to scoot in there, and now he'll try to cut underneath again here, and O'Crowdy will Har up, and Har is off the track, and Pat No takes the lead back. What a crazy, crazy wild turn of events here on the final lap, making their way through the skidoo corner. This one's not over yet, though. Now Har will be charging after him as they head through the rhythms on the backstretch for the final time. He's within a couple of sled lengths. He's going to follow Pat Note offline here as they come over from the inside. Back over the Arctic Cat triple, back around the Polaris turn. They'll come back down in front here for the final time. Heading into the FXR corner, Har's not going to be close enough to make a move. And Pat Note will win this Amsoil Pro Qualifier after a heated battle with Emil Har. Kyle Pauline will finish in the number three spot. Cole Katu crosses fourth. Cody Cam rounds out the top five. And Har and Pat will give each other a thumbs up there. So that was hard racing, but the two of them knew exactly what was going on out there. That was a little sign of respect. So what was the thought process as you were just picking and choosing lines each lap? Uh, yeah, just trying to be faster than the guy in front of me. Uh, I made a small mistake at the beginning and uh, yeah, unfortunately went off the track, but was able to fight back and uh, still take the win. So I'm happy about that. When Amsoil Championship Snowcross roars back, the pro light class is on the line. Can Marcus Ogemar chase down Jordan LaBelle? Amsoil Championship Snowcross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Pertech. 24-7 hydraulic and industrial hose service. By Sunoco. Fuel your best. By Polaris. And by Amsoil. Runs on freedom. Welcome back to Amsoil Championship Snowcross. The Makita Power Tower, it's the place where the best snowmobile mechanics on the planet hang out. Here's the lineup for tonight's Pro Light Final, Riley Bester, number one qualifier this evening. And the rider who was a winner one year ago, that's the number 17 of Corbin Anderson. And if you're wondering where the point leader is, I had a mechanical in round one, finished second in round two. That means your point leader, Jordan LaBelle, is going to start from the back row tonight. Let's go down to Josie. This pro light class is nothing short of competitive. We're seeing multiple winners in the qualifying and final rounds. But in the last round, we saw our rookie, Evan Christian, take the win from start to finish. That was his first pro light podium and win all in one. He was so excited when I was talking to him earlier today. You know, we get our sled ripping from the start. To, even in practice, it's awesome. And then we fine tune throughout the day. And um, and then we just get more and more confident as our sled gets faster and faster. And then in the final, you know, we're, uh, feels like we're at our fastest. And it just, it's like, okay, this we act like it's a heat race almost. And just go out there and uh, just worry about myself, ride my own race, and uh, hopefully pull the whole shot again and uh, just lead her all like, like we did in Deadwood. We are ready to go. Eight minutes plus two laps. 15 riders ready to throw down in tonight's Pro Life Final at the ERX Snowcross National. And there's the takeoff. Carson Allry trying to come through the pack, but it looks like as they settle in and work their way down the backstretch, it might be Riley Bester who got out there in front of the pack as they come charging off the corner. No, actually, it looks like it is one of the Andersons. Bester kind of buried back there in the pack. Oh, and there's contact in the air. Two sleds go down. Wow. A crash in the air. Bester involved in the situation, and so was Corbin Anderson on the number 17. And your race leader coming across the line is Leo Patno, followed by Ogamar in second, Evan Down in third, LaBelle from the back row avoided all the chaos. He is up to fifth. Yeah, we had seen a rider almost 
Oh, and Padno, Padno goes down. He was leading the race, that hands the lead to Ogamar, and now there's gonna be a battle for second between Evan Down and Anson Shield coming up alongside. LaBelle twists it in the air, somehow saves it. Here comes Anson Shield inside of the Dennis Kirk corner, and he will shut down Evan Down and move into the number two spot. Well, a lot went on there in those first few laps, that first crash involved a couple of riders. We're gonna take a look at some of the carnage, what went down. Now watch what happens. Riley Bester in the middle of the frame. Contact with Anderson in the air. Anderson, hard get off, landed on top of Dowd, knocked both of them out. De Riley Bester sled went out of the park. Wow. Lines coming together in the air. That can happen. We'll try to get an update on what has unfolded since then. Hopefully an update on the riders. But right now, Jordan LaBelle puts the pressure on. LaBelle, Evan oh, and Dow gets it twisted up in the middle of the rhythm section. LaBelle says, see ya, moves into the number three position now. Yellow flag still out in this section of the track as they're still trying to clear sleds out there from that opening lap incident. Ogamar, about two seconds to the good right now over Anson Shield with LaBelle just moving into third on this lap. And from the chaos early on in this race, it looks like Leo Patnode has refired and has rejoined the field. Currently, Cameron Anderson is not in this one following that incident on the first lap, but Jordan LaBelle continues to put the pressure on. Marcus Ogemar now assuming the super lead of the race, Queen Air. And he may actually start to catch some lappers sooner rather than later as they are getting strung out. LaBelle, meanwhile, Closing in on Anson Shield, so the battle for second and third being joined here as they head through the rhythm scored this Arctic Cat takeoff ramp. Ogamar bouncing through the inside lane there. We haven't seen too many riders take that inside, coming to the big air triple. LaBelle utilizing it here. He's going to try to get position on Anson Shield going into the FXR turn. Anson carves off the berm, and the Arctic Cat holds court for the moment. LaBelle switching lanes, trying to come up the inside of the Ziggler Cat corner. Comes out the other side and gets ahead of Anson for second. And taking that inside line can be tricky so long as you are right on the gas and have the power to exit that corner. It worked out in Jordan LaBelle's favor. It hasn't necessarily worked out for many riders this evening in that corner. But uh, this back section of the track, both riders making their way through smoothly. That hasn't been the case earlier in this race. And really all evening, these rhythms, the peaks of the jumps just want to pitch the sleds left and right, both riders making smooth work that last time through it. Closing in on four minutes plus two laps to go in the pro line final. The gap right now between Ogamar and LaBelle stands at 3.9 seconds. We'll keep an eye on that interval. Evan Doubt trying to reel Anson Sheelan to get back up on the podium. There's Evan Christian fighting it out for a moment there with Andy Pate just behind him. As we again go back up front, watch your race leader, Marcus Ogamar. Great runs being put together by both the Motorsports to do FXR back rides. Marcus Ogamar, your race leader, and Andy Pate, like you had said, Paul, chasing down that top five position against a winner from the last round, Evan Christian, number 33 for KC Motorsports Polaris. So Ogamar will check the interval as he gets ready to come to the M12 finish line, see if LaBelle is drawing in on him as we close in on three and a half minutes plus two to go, and the gap stays the same. Four seconds, there's this battle for a top five spot. Andy Pake trying to rail around the outside, setting up for the inside into the Ziggler cat corner here, but Evan Christian staying on that inside lane, throw the block, but Pake is able to shove his way past. He ripped off six in a row to start the season. One of those finals, he won from the back row. So yes, it can be done, but right now, Marcus Ogemar is the guy that's getting it done. Now he's gonna come over to the end zone finish line, 26 seconds left on the clock. Lap times are at about 46, 47 seconds. So that means it'll be two to go when they come by, and the lead continues to shrink. It went from 2.9 to 1.8 seconds. LaBelle is on the hammer. He's on the move and the laps are winding down. Jordan LaBelle, this place was full of peaks and valleys for him results-wise in 2021, sustained a major injury in the season opener, and he was healed up, came back next time to ERX, where he secured a second-place finish on the Saturday night portion of the show at the ERX 
off Snowcross National in 2021. So Jordan LaBelle kind of came in with mixed feelings about the course here at ERX Motor Park. But one thing that has changed so much of the course of the three rounds from 2021 to present season is that this track has been vastly different each time. He continues to put the moves on the number 58, Marcus Ogemar. And it's less than two laps to go. The battle is on here at the front of the field. Anson Shield was 10 seconds back and pretty solidly in third. So we're going to follow the lead duo right down here to the finish as LaBelle bounce through the rough stuff. He can see the leader in front of him, gets a face full of his roost coming off the Dennis Kirk corner. And when your lap times are 46 seconds, around the 45 second mark, Marcus, Marcus Ogamar just wants this race to end, I'm sure. No doubt they might be having a little bit of fun out there, but you had heard some riders say that in the qualifying sessions. Jordan LaBelle is trying to make something happen very quickly here. White flag is out. Final lap, LaBelle cranks off the inside of the skidoo corner, gets up alongside for a moment. Ogamar gets away as they head through the U.S. Air Force rhythm section. Back in, dancing a little bit for Ogamar, right up on the berm, cranks it down and powers away as they'll triple into this tricky backstretch rhythm section for the final time. LaBelle still on the charge as they make their way up into the Dennis Kirk corner. Here we go, Marcus Ogamar playing defense. Only a couple of corners to go. This is where this could be the difference maker. They'll come to the big air triple one more time. Ogamar hits it, clears it. He's down and away into the FXR turn. LaBelle takes a run at him and just misses his back end. And Marcus Ogamar gets his first pro-like final of the year. And LaBelle, an incredible back row to second place run. And it looks like Anson Shield will complete the podium finishers as he crosses in third. We'll meet our winner at the podium when Amsoil Championship Snowcross returns. but it looks like as they settle in and work their way down the backstretch, it might be Riley Bester who got out there in front of the pack as they come charging off the corner. No, actually, it looks like it is one of the Andersons. Bester kind of buried back there in the pack. Oh, there's contact in the air. Two sleds go down. Wow. So Marcus Ogemar, avoiding all the chaos, gets up to the front of the field. That's where he has been all race long. Jordan LaBelle coming from the back row to fifth on lap number one, and then charged his way up into second spot. He is running out of time. There's Jordan LaBelle, still 3.7 seconds back with two and a half minutes plus two laps to go. LaBelle is on the hammer. A battle is on here at the front of the field. Anson Shield is 10 seconds back. LaBelle bounce through the round stuff. He can see the leader in front of him. Gets a face full of his roost coming off the Dennis Kirk corner. LaBelle cranks off the inside of the skidoo corner. Gets up alongside for a moment. Ogamar gets away as they head through the U.S. Air Force rhythm section. Back in, dancing a little bit for Ogamar. Right up on the burn, cranks it down and powers away. Ogamar hits it. Clears it. He's down and away into the FXR turn. LaBelle takes a run at him and just misses his back end. And Marcus Ogemar gets his first pro like final of the year. What an exciting race. All smiles down here, Marcus. Talk about the beginning of that race right from the start when you went out and you got to be in front of the pack. Yeah, I got a, got a good start, so I got to thank body in case for that um, slate is really fast so <laughs> back underneath in the on the inside in the start and tried to keep my line and the guy in the lead made a made a mistake on the first lap so I was able to pass in and then uh, tried to put down some fast lap fast laps in the beginning <coughs> and uh, yeah it's awesome it's uh, it's been a long time since I've been winning a race over three years so it feels really good our pro women final is up next and a familiar face back with us as the number five qualifier. That's right. That's the 214 of Tasha Lang. One of our local racers makes a big comeback. When she was here one year ago, she found herself on the podium and the fans went wild. A look at our back row starters here as well. Now we'll go to Josie for this pre-race report. 
Maline Katu, what a ride for you. On the podium, you were talking about how as a fun ride, you just got to stay calm and kind of ride your own race and go through the motions of the track. So what was the race like for you last night when you got those checkered flags? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm just thinking about having fun and not really dealing with all the pressure that I put on myself. So it's more about just being out there, having fun, finding good lines, good rhythm. And now that obviously we're at ERX, there's so much snow and I'm loving every second of it, being out there and yeah, just doing my own thing. All right, here we go. And there's the takeoff. Who will grab the whole shot as they go blasting down into the skidoo corner. Looks like a three-way battle for the lead as they come blasting down the straightaway. And I think Malin Katu got out in front of everybody into the race lead as she comes off the Dennis Kirk corner. That's bad news for everybody else. It is bad news, but for her, great news. Her second stud boy hole shot in the finals this season. Look at the distance she's put between herself and the rest of the field here across the front stretch first time by. Oh, and Taven Woody tries to do the triple. Oh, boy. And I don't know how she managed to ride out of it. She's going to lose a spot and then gain it right back coming over the end. So I'll finish like jump. Man, that was guts right there trying to do a triple on a stock 600 sled. I'd have to believe her heart is racing after a move like that, trying to breathe, maintain your composure, because right now the number 93 5.4 second lead, just one lap in the books here. Three-way battle between, looks like the 518 Naley LaBelle, Tasha Lang, and Taven Woody for the second place position. Yeah, right now, if Tasha could get by Naley, that would put her up into a podium spot. Well, it looks like she got a little bit of an issue and trying to cut her way into the mix. Here comes Anna Hauger on the number 331, trying to come around the outside. They'll all funnel into the inside lane here on the Polaris turn. Hauger gets up ahead of Tasha Lane. That's going to drop her back to the fifth spot. And Anana's not done as they'll do the double single over the big air triple, whip their way here into the FXR corner. And Anana grabs another position from LaBelle, so she's up into a podium spot. Making two passes, not one but two on that last lap. She is on the move. Another rider continuously on the move. Added another three seconds, three and a half seconds to her lead. That's Malin Katu. Comfortably out in front here working the final lap. There's your race leader and point leader, Malin Katu. 17 second lead, almost an 18 second lead. A dominating force to be reckoned with here in round 11 for the pro women. She's going to make it through the 169 section through the Arctic Cat rhythms. A few more corners remaining. She'll come off the Polaris turn. Make her way up here to the big air and she'll double single it. And then around the FXR turn, it's gonna be another one in the win column for Malinka Katu. She wins tonight's Pro Women Final here at ERX Motor Park. Josie heads to the podium to hear from our winner when Amsoil Championship Snowcross returns to ERX in Elk River, Minnesota. And there's the takeoff. Who will grab the whole shot as they go blasting down into the skidoo corner? Looks like a three-way battle for the lead as they come blasting down the straightaway. And I think Malin Katu got out in front of everybody into the race lead as she comes off the Dennis Kirk corner. That's bad news for everybody else. Hi. Oh, and Taven Woody tries to do the triple. Oh, boy. And I don't know how she managed to ride out of it. She's going to lose a spot and then gain it right back coming over the end. So I'll finish like jump. Man, that was guts right there trying to do a triple on a stock 600 sled. Yeah, and right now, if Tasha could get by Naley, that would put her up into a podium spot. Well, it looks like she got a little bit of an issue and trying to cut her way into the mix. Here comes Anna Hauger on the number 331, trying to come around the outside. They'll all funnel into the inside lane here on the Polaris turn. Hauger gets up ahead of Tasha Lane. That's going to drop her back to the fifth spot. And Anana's not done as they'll do the double single over the big air triple, whip their way here into the FXR corner. And Anana grabs another position from LaBelle, so she's up into a podium spot. Yeah, and she is blasted out to, you ready for this? 12 seconds of cushion over Taven Woody, who is in second. Speaking of settled in, comfortably out in front here working the final lap, there's your race leader and point leader, Malin Katu. It's gonna be another one in the win column 
for Malinka Tu. She wins tonight's Pro Women Final here at ERX Motor Bar. <laughs> Malina, at one point in that race, you had an 18, almost an 18 second lead. Throughout that race, could you feel the pressure just kind of lift off of you as you did have such a long lead? Well, of course, I see Cole right away go like this. So then I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. And then I kind of just saved my sled for because we still have five races left. And I kind of was just enjoying it, having fun out there. And yeah. Snowbike Moto2 action is next. Troy Horbani outdueled Jesse Kirchmeyer for the win in Moto1. And Yannick Boucher has been consistently in these top positions. You know he's going to be in search of another overall podium. As well, there's the takeoff. Horbani's got the whole shot. Throws a little elbow there at Kirchmeyer as they come blasting over. The backstretch rhythm section, Boucher coming by Kenyon Ashley, and whoa, Kirchmeyer got it a little sideways. What a start for the 157, Troy Horvati. Goes wide right after the start there. He knew he needed to take command of the line that he was aware, Jesse Kirchmeyer was aware of, so a good, clean start for the 157. Oh, and a little bit sketchy coming out of the rhythm section. These guys could triple it up, and now they'll rip these berms. Coming to the Gensoil finish line to complete lap number one. You see Horbani downshifting in the air. Yep, these are motorcycles, so you shift them just like you do if you're riding motocross or supercross. And the number 53 Bailey Motorsports ride, Yannick Boucher on that front stretch, didn't time the rhythms just right, so he made some hard impact suspension, just eating up all of that impact, but did slow his roll just a little bit. But no harm, no foul, was able to maintain position in third, but when it happened, it was bar to bar with Jesse Kirchmeyer. Jesse has been able to pull away just a little bit. Our body makes it look easy, and Kirchmeyer sailing it as well. Kirchmeyer still has a little steam coming off of that in the Moto 1 round. It looked like he had a coolant leak on that KTM Southside Polaris timber sled conversion kit ride. It had shown some steam again here in Moto number 2. Yeah, to take you back to Moto 1 results, it was Horbati, Kirchmeyer, Boucher, Ashley Ward, your top five. So Horbati looking to Go wire to wire, win both motos, but Kirchmeyer has something to say about it. He carves the inside of the berm, and there goes the cowboy. Blasts his way into the lead, comes over, takes the line away from Horbani. They both have to double through there. Whoa, contact, they're both down. Wow, tough, that heavy happened, contact. That happened in the air, and here's the thing. The third place, Yannick Boucher, hasn't quite gotten by him just yet. So if they can remount, they may still be in the race lead. We're watching, there's the 195 of Keaton Ward. He's coming around the FXR turn. Let's see what happens now as timing and scoring resets. Ward now has the race lead. Boucher is second. And we had seen Troy Horbati get all squirreled up once again in the FXR yeah. corner. So just shortly after having then Yannick Boucher bails. Oh, a bad break for the Butcher. Yannick Boucher running in the second spot. Now he's got to try to get back on and uh, get that Yamaha fired back up. It is chaos out here on the racetrack. And Keaton Ward, while well, he may very well become the first rider not named for Body or Kirchmeyer to win a moto this season. Yeah, and like you said, this would be Keaton Ward's first moto win of the season. There's Horbani. Five and a half seconds back in the second position, looking to lock up the overall if he can make it to the finish. Ward coming down over the big air triple, it'll single double it, cross the end soil finish line, jump Keaton Ward, getting a moto win. And Troy Horbani will come through and unofficially, he will grab the overall with a second place finish. And how about Nate Kingston? Looks like Nate Kingston is gonna come around and he is going to wind up with a top four finish as he finishes behind Kirchmeyer in the number four spot. There's the takeoff. horbody has got the whole shot. Throws a little elbow there at Kirchmeyer as they come blasting over the backstretch rhythm section. Boucher coming by Kenyon Ashley. And whoa, Kirchmeyer got it a little sideways. So Horbani looking to... Go wire to wire, win both motos, but Kirchmeyer has something to say about it. He carves the inside of the berm, and there goes the cowboy. Blasts his way into the lead, comes over, takes the line away from Horbani. 
They both have to double through there. Whoa, contact, they're both down. That happened in the air. And here's the thing, the third place Yannick Boucher hasn't quite gotten by him just yet. So if they can remount, they may still be in the race lead. Ward now has the race lead. Boucher is second. Just shortly after having and Yannick Boucher bails. Oh, a bad break for the butcher. Yannick Boucher running in the second spot. Now Bonnie, five and a half seconds back in the second position, looking to lock up the overall if he can make it to the finish. Troy all smiles down here for the overall tonight. Talk about the differences in motos and what you applied to the second to get the overall. Uh, the first one I went out there and led uh, almost the whole race. I think Yannick was on me in the first few laps, but I was able to get a gap and ride smooth. And the second one I knew I had to go for the win again. And uh, it's it's the track was tight out there. The good, the good lines were, there was only a few good lines. So it kept the racing close. And um, I tried my hardest and found, saw an opportunity and I took it and it, it let me get on top of the box. So I'm feeling good. It's showtime. The pro class is on the line, just about under starter's orders. Can Hunter Patton make a big move today? Amsoil Championship Snowcross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Amsoil. Runs on freedom. By the U.S. Air Force. Full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform. Join us. And by Makita. Experience Makita cordless outdoor power equipment. It's 10 minutes plus two laps in the Amsoil Pro Final. Time for the big show on the snow. The Amsoil Pro Final is on the line. Mr. Consistency in qualifying. Hunter Patnode, number one qualifier. And Emil Har has been on the move, earned his first career pro win just one week ago. Let's take a look at the back row now. You're going to see some good names back there as well, including Oscar Norm, who was on the podium in round number nine. Let's get a pre-race report from Josie. It's going to be nothing short of exciting with lots going on. Elias Ischel still holding the red number plates, but Hunter Patnode wanting them back that he had earlier this season. Really excited about this track. We saw all finished concrete do really good qualifying in the qualifying rounds today. It's going to be fun racing. A track of this size is going to allow for a lot of passing, so it's going to be gnarly out there. We are about ready to go. The Amsoil Pro Final. It's a mega track, and the world's greatest snowcross racers are about to have a Minnesota throwdown. Here we go with the Amsoil Pro Final as they charge off into the Skidoo corner and charging down the backstretch. Francis Peltier has grabbed the early lead. Looks like Adam Peterson and Hunter Padno with good starts as well. Padno will come to the inside of Peterson and he'll take over second. And here comes Ischel up alongside, trying to move into the number three spot with Emil Har in tow. Battle for the lead, battle for the third place position and second place position here. A bit of history repeating as we see Hunter Patnode makes the pass on the 220. Francis Pelletier followed by Elias Ischel. Ischel with a good run up into third here in the early going. Patnode ramping off the outside, gets a little bit off rhythm. Pelletier trying to catch back up to him here, but Patnode opened up a few sled lengths here off to the top of the banking in the skidoo corner. He will charge away and open up several sled lengths advantage. Hunter Patno to the Shearing Speed Sports to do like a rocket ship. Now we're seeing the number 31, Emil Har, put the charge on Francis Pelletier. Yeah, and Emil got by Elias Ischel, who is now back in fourth. Har drops to the inside of the Polaris turn, looks to come out through the rhythms. Now into to the big air triple. Pelletier flies it a little bit lower. They will be side by side into the corner and coming out the other side. Har has the number two spot. So many storylines in the top five here. Hunter Patnode, Emil Har, Francis Pelletier, Elias Ischel, followed by Adam Peterson, and that's just your top five, and things are not slowing down with any of the battles out here. Hunter Patnode back in round number nine, sustained a soft tissue injury on his left ankle. He came back and wound up second in round number 10, 
chasing your race winner, Francis Peltier, all the way to the checkered flag. Could tonight be the night that Pat Node finally breaks through and gets his first M's Oil Pro win of the year. The rest of the riders are going to have something to say about it. Here comes the Viking Rocket now charging up on Peltier. This is the battle for third. Having to play defense, little knock on the tail end of the sled. He knows Elias Ischel is right there. He takes the inside line. Jordan LaBelle made it happen in just one race ago. Elias Ischel makes it work as well, is able to close off that lane ahead of Francis Pelletier. And it comes away with about a sled length heading into the ski corner. Early top five right now. It is Pat Nove by about two seconds over Emil Hart, followed by Pelletier who just surrendered the third spot. So Ischel is third, Peltier is fourth, Daniel Benham sitting back there in the number five spot and knocking at the door is Oscar Norm, who has just gotten by Adam Peterson as he moves into sixth. And now Benham going to work on Peltier here in a race for the fourth and fifth spots. And this is a track I really do throughout the evening have expected Daniel Benham to perform well on. And he is, he's on the move. Like you had said, charging down Francis Pelletier, who currently sits fourth. So Daniel P5, your race leader, Hunter Patnode, currently the fastest rider on the track, but not by much. Last time by this track, it was Emil Har, your second place rider, who put down the fastest lap time. For watching Benham continue to chase after Peltier as they get to the end of the backstretch rhythms. Around that 93 Dennis Kirk corner onto the 169 straight. That's where they'll hit this big air triple. Off the Polaris corner, both of them staying on the inside. And then back to the big air triple right down here in front of a grandstand here tonight at DRX Motor Park. Hunter Patno continuing to hold on to a two second advantage here at the head of the class. The power being put down by the number eight, the Ocho, Hunter Patnode. Two second lead over Imel Har. Imel Har not allowing him to gain ground. So keeping right there, keeping him honest. Daniel Benham continues to force the issue on the 220. So it is still two seconds. The gap between race leader Patnode and second place Imel Har. That's about two and a half seconds back to where Elias Ischel sits in the number three spot, but still a lot of time here, about 5.45 plus two laps left to go in the Sam's Oil Pro Final. And Hunter Patnode, a podium runner here at ERX Motor Park. Round two of 2021 came away with a second place finish. Multiple podiums this season at one point had their red plates, and he wants them back. Pat Node, Har, Ischel, your top three, followed by Pelletier, Benham, Norum, Cam, Pauline, Peterson, and Yurk in top ten. So now Emil Har having to contend with the Viking Rocket, who is starting to nip at his heels. The gap was a couple of seconds. Now you can measure it in a couple of sled lengths as they are about to go to battle for that second position. Pat Node continues the lead up into the skidoo turn. There goes Pat Node out of the frame. Here is Emil Har. And here comes Ischel. Ischel trying to make a run at him through the back stretch rhythm. Gets a triple, triple in there. We haven't seen that yet. He's up to the outside here, coming off the Dennis Kirk corner. Ischel taking a different rhythm through here, trying to catch Emil Har in this battle for the number two spot. A rider that will find the line that seemingly else no one wants to take, but this is a guy that can make it happen, and that is why he's a multi-time champion. Hold those red plates. He is a shark smelling blood in the water here with the number 31, Emil Har, both winners this season. Three minutes, 15 seconds, plus two laps to go. Patno continuing to lead by about two and a half seconds, so he is taking advantage of this battle between Har and Ischel to pull out a little bit of a gap, but now his sled is slowed. Patno may have a mechanical issue. He surrenders the lead, and it's now a side-by-side -side battle between Ischel and Har, and Ischel takes over the top spot. Yeah, we'll try to get word on, keep our eyes on the number eight, Hunter Patnode, but Emil Har not giving up on this one. Continues to chase down your new race leader, the Viking Rocket. And Patnode, yeah, he is off power. Could not get the big triple here in front. Peltier is starting to run him down, so Peltier might be able to get himself into a podium spot. Patnode trying to hang on to podium here through the final two minutes, 28 seconds, plus two laps after some type of an issue slowed him while he was leading the race. And that puts the Viking Rocket in the driver's seat right now, about one second to the good over Emil Har. And depending where Hunter Patnode is able to salvage a position, we'll see if he's able to 
regain some speed and momentum. Not likely if it's a mechanical. We'll see what he's able to salvage for points in this one, but would be a great points night for Imohar coming into the night before his qualifier sits third in the points. Elias Fischel, of course, your points leader, and coming in fourth to this round is Francis Pelletier. Hart works out of the FXR turn, watching Ischel slowly build the lead in front of him. A minute, 40 seconds, plus two laps left to go. Now there's the gap between Pat Note, again riding a sled that is a little bit wounded right now, and Francis Peltier, who is trying to get up there to get the podium spot as they battle out of the skidoo corner. Ischel continues to draw away from Emil Har as they head down the back stretch and the battle for third looks like it is on and i think peltier just made the move there just out of the corner to take over that third position yes he did francis peltier coming with some momentum in the last round round 10 win it was a perfect race wire to wire rip the stud boy hole shot led the entirety in dominating fashion held off the legs of a hard charging hunter pat node throughout so didn't just do so and run away with it no he he just held a very dominant race of to perfection, a three-time winner this season. Aishel making his way back down the straightaway here. Here is Emil Hart continuing to hold on to second. White flag should be coming, I believe, when they come across the Emsoil finish line. Yes, the one-to-go signal in the air. Elias Ischel looking to grab another win, and Emil Har looking maybe to close in and possibly leapfrog Hunter Patno to move to second in the pro point standard. Yeah, and we are so proud to host the finest in the world, Team Norway leading, Team Sweden, Team Canada present in your top three, followed by Team USA. Hunter Patno in that fourth place position. Elias Ischel trying to breathe, meet his marks, a good, comfortable, almost four-second lead as he closes in on the win. And he can fist pump over that Articat triple. He knows he's got a good lead as he comes down through that rhythm section. Back to the big air triple one more time. Nice one-handed salute to the packed house here at ERX. Off the FXR corner once again. The Viking Rocket is on top of the box here tonight at ERX Motor Park. Emil Har will finish in second. Third spot will go to Francis Peltier. They'll complete the podium. Pat Note holds off Daniel Benham by about three slug lengths across the line for fourth and fifth. Here we go with the Emsoil Pro Final as they charge off into the Skidoo corner and charging down the backstretch. Francis Peltier has grabbed the early lead. Looks like Adam Peterson and Hunter Padno with good starts as well. Padno will come to the inside of Peterson and he'll take over second. And here comes Ischel up the long side, trying to move into the number three spot with Emil Har in tow. Padno continuing to lead by about two and a half seconds. So he is taking advantage of this battle between Har and Ischel to pull out a little bit of a gap. But now his sled is slowed. Padno may have a mechanical issue. He surrenders the lead, and it's now a side-by-side -side battle between Ischel and Har, and Ischel takes over the top spot. The FXR corner once again. The Viking Rocket is on top of the box here tonight at ERX Motor Park. No, I was trying to find a good lines, of course, and uh, uh, I was in third or fourth in the first lap, and uh, yeah, I was taking the inside after a finish and uh, to try to gain a spot, but Emil passed me there too, so I actually lost a spot, but I. I just I knew it was going to be better and better in that inside line, so I kept doing it and I was making up time and yeah, in that back session too I could pass them and yeah, I was just, I just need to uh, thank my whole team, uh, Team Motorsport, uh, they do an awesome job, the whole, uh, everyone in the trailers. With his win here in round number 11, Elias Ischel maintains the points lead, but second and third is getting tight. Only three points separate Hunter Patnode and Emil Har. Make sure to follow us on all of our great social media outlets for some awesome content, including our official website at snowcross.com. For Josie Christian and Haley Shanley, I'm Paul Small. Thanks for watching Amsoil Championship Snowcross on the CBS Sports Network.